Hi, everybody. This is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology. It is Thursday, December 12th, and today we're going to take a look at Venus's upcoming conjunction of the planet Pluto. This is happening today and tomorrow. The moon is about to move into Cancer and move through a bunch of oppositions to Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Pluto. We've got a couple of days worth of this um, intense Venus-Pluto dynamic um, ahead of us. So we're going to talk today about what to watch for and um, how to work with this transit at a deeper level. Um, before I do that, I want to remind everybody I'm in my last 40 days of the year when I fundraise for the year ahead. Um, I have an annual Kickstarter that I've been doing for, this is my sixth year. Uh, this is a big part of how I earn my living, uh, support my family, and so forth. If you appreciate my work and are able to pitch in, I would greatly appreciate it. Our target goal this year is to beat last year's record, which was 419 backers. Um, we are at 342 with 19 days left to go. So we're almost there, um, but I could really use your support still. When you donate, you can find the link in the video description or in the chat box below in the, chat, in the comments section. And when you donate, you can pick up a reward reading. I make them personally for people. Um, you can pick up a gift reading for someone. There are 50% um, off all of the online courses that I teach. You can check those out. And that's um, whether that's my first year program, my second year program, or my third year program. Um, all online courses you can take from anywhere in the world if you want to come and study astrology with me next year in 2020. And you can actually redeem that tuition in 2021 as well. So please check that out. Give if you can. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Venus's upcoming conjunction of Pluto. So I'm going to show you what it looks like first. You can see it forming right now in the sky. <clears throat> Here is uh, Venus at about 20 degrees of Capricorn, and Pluto is, of course, at 21 degrees of Capricorn. And Venus will perfect this uh, in about the next 24 hours. By about tomorrow afternoon, Venus will be just uh, separating from the conjunction of Pluto. So in the next 24 hours, you're going to see this conjunction come through. Of course, Venus is also just passing through a conjunction of Saturn, which I covered earlier in the week. And Jupiter has just ingressed into Capricorn. And we have a solar eclipse coming up just after Christmas in Capricorn. And then a lunar eclipse in Cancer, the opposite sign, uh, on the 10th. And then the big Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn on January 12th. So much action across the Cancer-Capricorn axis right now. Now, um, one of the things that's also very interesting about this is that um, tomorrow, it's not just that Venus is conjoining um, with uh, Pluto, which is big enough on its own, but it's also the fact that as we um, get into this evening, the moon will cross into the sign of Cancer, at which point, as soon as it does so, it moves into an opposition with Jupiter, and then it's going to start hitting a bunch of aspects of sextile to Uranus, um, and then into Friday uh, throughout the day, the moon is going to start moving into the more dynamic oppositions. By tomorrow evening, you're going to see this starting to form up as the moon comes into closer opposition with Saturn, but it really goes into the evening like through the middle of the night on Friday into Saturday, where you see the moon moving through the opposition to Pluto by early morning on Saturday. And then the rest of the day, uh, things are relatively calm. The moon will oppose Venus in the early afternoon. And then, you know, moon's kind of void, of course, and passing out of that oppositional range. But that means between now and Saturday afternoon, we have a really intense wave coming through the Cancer Capricorn axis that is especially triggering this um, Venus-Pluto dynamic. So that's what we want to talk about today and just give you a sense of how to understand this, what to make of it, and um, hopefully how to pass through this uh, conjunction with greater ease. So here's what to watch for. Venus, of course, is a goddess of love, uh, represents beauty, compassion, uh, and harmony, the desire to um, unite with others in agreement. And it is also a planet that has a lot to do with cleanliness, things that are clean and beautiful. Um, the distinction between cleanliness and ugliness can actually be a really important part of the Venus uh, conjunction to Pluto. So we'll talk about that. Um, but Venus also, um, when Venus is um, in any sign, we're always thinking about these same significations. Agreement, friendship, harmony, love, beauty, sexuality, romance, desire, sensuality, things that are pleasing to the senses, and also cleanliness in general. Uh, now, when we think about Pluto, we're thinking about Lord of the Underworld, a planet that has to do with uh, catharsis, and purgation, 
things that are being purged or cleansed sometimes in a fiery, intense, and cathartic manner, in a manner that is transformative, but intense, deep, sometimes painful. Uh, Pluto often erupts with very powerful kind of psychic energy from the unconscious and can depict, um, whenever whatever planet it joins with, it can depict the unconscious forces around those set of topics um, being released in volcanic and often sort of um, powerful and again, cathartic ways often very purgative, healing, regenerative. It can be about new life or the, you know, the, um, where something like it, one of the an examples that Liz Green used one time as famous psychological astrologer is someone who has a, you know, a, a limb that's like rotting and they don't know it's rotting. And then all of a sudden they find out, they realize that it's rotting and then they, they may have to amputate it. Sounds it's kind of heavy and gross, I know, but Sometimes Pluto is like, yeah, this thing is now you're seeing it for what it is, and now it's got to go. So, for example, um, I have a uh, someone in my life. I'll just keep it private for now. I have someone in my life um, who is dealing, like for example, like right now they're dealing with a upper respiratory infection, and so what they did was they finally, they're, right now today, they're actually uncovering the fact or they just did uncover, I should say, that they actually have an infection. And the infection is coming to the surface after dealing with it for a while and not knowing what was going on. And then all of a sudden, it, here it just comes exploding up to the surface. And there you have this, this ugly kind of festering you know, in, infectiousness. And it's being purged, it's being treated probably you know, on antibiotics, right? So the point is that oftentimes... Pluto works like that alongside of Venus, where it will purge and bring something up to the surface that you didn't know was there or that unconsciously was lingering somewhere, maybe in an unhealthy way, and just expose it, bring it up to the sunlight. They say sunlight's the best antibiotic. And just reveal it for what it is. And then after that, you have the chance to heal and, and move forward. So um, Pluto is when when paired with Venus is often about the purgation, catharsis, release, and transformation and rebirth. The feeling that like yeah, I was sick and I didn't know I was, and now I'm on an antibiotic and I'm starting to finally feel better. It's a funny thing how we can be sick like that and sometimes like not know that we are. Anyway, so but the purgation is happening around love and relationships, for example. So purging, you know, when there's when you have one of those conversations where you're just something comes up from the unconscious space between you and someone that you love, a friend. Um, with Venus, sometimes it's girlfriends or sisters or things like that. Um, or it can be a lover, either man or woman, right? But just something like that. Or it can also be that any kind of relationship, a business relationship, a work relationship, a professional relationship, any kind of relationship signified by Venus, or any kind of agreement or contract signified by Venus, um, will go through a kind of death and rebirth process or a process where, you know, these heavier, darker forces come up to the surface where you can see them. And it's like, oh, that's what's been underneath the surface of this situation. And so then there's a chance to, to purge, cleanse, heal, and it can be very regenerative and, and restorative. Depends on how willing people are to um, forgive, to um, look, at, you know, like in relationships, it's always um, one of my, my, my spiritual teacher often says, you know, for relationships to work, people have to be able to look at themselves first and also um, be willing to compromise. And um, that's not to say that, you know, um, you know, it's not, not to say that there aren't, it takes two people to dance, you know, but in relationships, as things might be coming up this weekend, one simple piece of advice is, you know, make sure that we're really looking at ourselves even if stuff is really coming to the surface that is powerful and difficult to deal with, difficult to square up to and face, and it seems like the other person has really wronged you, um, it's, it's easier for us if we start by looking at how did I participate in the creation of this situation or how am I culpable here? Um, and not in some trite way and not in a mean way. We don't want to be mean to ourselves when we do this. It's just a simple way of trying to remain humble and um, in general, in life, one of the things that we all struggle with is to, you know, try to point out the splinter in someone else's eye before seeing the plank in our own. So general advice for Venus, 
going through the catharsis with Pluto is as things are revealed in relationships, do what we can to stay humble and to stay focused on the ways in which we can improve to be better servants of those that we care about. The, anyone, whether it's our kids or our parents or our friends or our lovers or people we work with, anything. That's not easy to do um, because it requires to you know, take a hard look in the mirror. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that look in the mirror has to be done with another person. So for example, sometimes, you know, let's say you have a coworker and let's say something happens at work and you realize like you've got a really toxic coworker, you know, something like this toxic relationship or something like that. And you see how you, you recognize, oh, I see how I've been part of the problem. But if you go and tell that other individual, let's say the way that you see that you've been a part of the problem or a part of creating some kind of intense encounter, um, the, the trouble is that um, not everyone, unless the other person is mature enough to also look at themselves and cooperate, you'll be casting your pearl. And so you want to be careful. The, one of the things that is very common for Venus and Pluto is to see very deeply into the shadows of our relationships, of our love life, of our friendships, and so forth. And as we do so, being self-reflective about it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to take more ownership or responsibility for something than someone else does. Um, because again, if we're in a relationship with someone and they're not willing to cooperate, meet us halfway and do that same reflective work, then oftentimes we need to protect ourselves from, um, from that dynamic. And the dynamic, the Pluto-Venus can be about the death of a relationship. It can be about the end of, of some kind of, um, uh, you know, any kind of relationship. Again, it can be that the death of that relationship is the, the ending of it. Um, we can learn a lot from it. But that doesn't always mean that as we're learning a lot from some kind of relationship dynamic that we have to necessarily, um, you know, bear our souls to the other person, if that makes sense. On the other hand, if you are in a situation with people that you love, that care about you, that are willing to cooperate, both people can really look at how a situation was created cooperatively through both people, individuals' karmas. It can be open and vulnerable. And then this death can really be a rebirth as well. So we have to kind of know which is which. Um, but either way, we can still always look at our own um, part in the situation. We can be self-reflective because when we are and we humble ourselves and we think about how to serve and love others and how to Im improve upon that in simple ways without chastising ourselves, the heart open stays open when we do that. And that's a good way to, to try to move forward through difficult relationship, challenging situations. Um, another thing to be careful of is the potential for uh, Pluto intensifies things and Venus is desire. Venus has to do with what we desire, what we want. And so you have to be careful about uh, the way that your desires can um, take over right now to become paranoid or obsessive about something really, really anxious or really, really, um, you know, desiring of something and then to not be able to live without it or to try to punish others or make other people suffer around you if you're not getting your own way. Um, one of one of the things that I know can be really challenging with Venus Pluto conjunctions is that um, you know something that really triggers us um, can can take place around our desires. So something that we really want or need is taken from us, or something or withheld from us, or something that we really want or need feels like it's just out of reach, and we can kind of get obsessive and kind of you know um, we can start. We can, have, we can start to um, grope or grasp at things when, when it's not appropriate, uh, when it might just end up kind of consuming us and, um, you know, taking us down. It's sort of like, I, you know, again, like simple examples. I think of my, like, you know, my one and a half year old who is like, right now she's in like destructor mode. It's like a little T-Rex just walking around, like smashing things. <laughs> you know, she pulled the ornaments off the Christmas tree, just like whatever. And um, one of the things that I've noticed is that like, there's no impulse control yet, right? It's like she desires that she sees something, she desires it, she wants to touch it or grab it or pull it or whatever. It's just go and grab. And sometimes Venus Pluto is like that too, where there's no ability to control our impulses, especially with shiny things or things that we want. Um, and so, you know, just have to be careful of that. This is the potentially the dark Venus, the dark side of Venus, um, which can also be about when our desires um, and our need for something that we, we want 
um, whether that's a, you know, like, I mean, Venus Pluto can, for example, can be involved in situations where, you know, a, the, the classic situation of someone being slipped something, you know, in their drink at a bar or something where someone gets um, taken advantage of because someone wants something so bad that they're willing to do something dark, Pluto, in order to get it. Um, so you just have to be, you know, just on alert for the fact that Venus can also kind of go dark and get a little obsessive and a little crazy right now. The other thing is that Venus Pluto um, contacts in a general way can also mean that um, we have a really hard time looking at the shadow of Venus, whether that's our fashion, our style, our taste, our possessions, our clothing. Sometimes it's just hard to really look at the dark side of our desires and whether they're healthy for us or not. So that's also something that you might see coming up this weekend. So uh, this will be pretty, t pretty intense the next two days um, as the moon is also moving through oppositions to um, Pluto and uh, Saturn and Jupiter and Venus and so on and so forth. So uh, watch for that. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I, will, I would love to hear your comments in the comment section. Tell me how this transit goes for you. Um, tell me the stories that are popping up for you right now or particularly vivid ways that you see this um, on display in your life. Or you can also look and see this in the news. Uh, sometimes it'll show up in the news as well. Uh, remember, I am um, closing in on 420 backers. So if you are able to uh, donate, I really appreciate your help. And I hope um, next time I talk to you, we'll be closer to closing in on 420 backers this year. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, and I will be probably be back in touch over the weekend again. I'm, one thing I'm going to be doing over the weekend is previewing all of the different courses that I offer in 2020 and beyond. So you can see what they are and uh, think about signing up for one uh, while they're on sale. Okay, that's what I've got. Have a great weekend, everyone. Take care.